Hi. If you've ever driven through Colorado on Interstate 70, you probably noticed this big road cut just south of Golden, Colorado. This road cut, constructed in the 1960s, severs the Dakota Hogback, a tilted sequence of Jurassic and Cretaceous sedimentary rocks made famous by an abundance of dinosaur tracks and fossil bones. This was one of the battlegrounds during the famous Bone Wars of the late 1800s. During this time, Edward Drinker Cope and Nathaniel Charles Marsh, two otherwise respectable paleontologists, engaged in outrageous acts of nefarious competitive behavior in their quest for dinosaur remains. These acts included bribery, sabotage, and theft. The result, however, was over 142 new species of dinosaurs. It also caused the financial, social, and professional ruin of Cope and Marsh. We use the northern end of the Dakota Hogback, known locally as Tin Cup Ridge, as a test bed for Rockware software. Here's why. At first glance, this looks like a classic hogback or a ridge with steep sides formed by harder or erosionally resistant dipping strata overlying more readily eroded, softer, slope-forming material. In this case, we have the South Platte and Lytle formations forming a resistant cap above the softer Morrison formation. It looks like pretty simple stuff. Well, it's not. Instead, we have overturned beds dipping at 30 degrees to the west, adjacent to vertically tilted beds. To make it even more interesting, the Cretaceous South Platte Formation, the spine former, contains several clay units that have been mined for over 150 years. Conventional underground shrinkage stope mining was the method of choice in which the mines would start as underground tunnels or drifts by successively scraping the clay above into draw points shaped like elongated funnels called stopes, the mine would extend upwards. In some cases, these stopes would extend to the point where they daylighted at the surface into so-called glory holes such as this one. Not uncommonly, the overlying rock sometimes collapsed into the stopes. Needless to say, underground mining in these conditions was a dangerous undertaking. We're going to be using data from this area to show how we used a variety of tools within Rockworks to gain a better understanding of the geology within this sliver of the Rocky Mountain Front Range foothills. We'll start by creating a model of the surface topography. Next, we'll record some bedding plane and fault orientations and plot this data as maps and 3D diagrams. After that, we'll show how we use the surface topography model to create cross sections. From there, we'll show how to plot the bedding planes, contacts, and faults within these cross sections. Then, we'll be plotting the underground mine workings as three-dimensional tubes. Next, we'll add measured sections and outcrops as imaginary boreholes within our cross sections. Finally, we'll be adding some manually drawn interpretations to the cross sections and plotting this information in 3D. Given the inevitability of feature creep, I suspect we'll be adding additional topics that we never considered when we shot this scene. So if you're interested, be sure to check out the other videos within this series to see case studies using this area and Rockworks software.